You see, the fire's got to fall because it's got to consume you. Well, what does that mean, Pastor? It means that there are things that have somehow attached themselves to your life that God is wanting to reveal so he can consume. There are parts of you, ways that you think, mentalities that you have, feelings that you display, places that you go. God is wanting to consume, burn some things off of you. There's some stuff that need not be in existence any longer as it relates to your life. God is sending consuming fire this morning and he's talking to you. He wants to consume you he wants you i don't care who you are how long you've been serving him how spiritual you may think you are think you've been how long you fasted how much you read how much you know in comparison to god you are nothing nothing so come to him as nothing and let him do his work keep your perspective he is god what did isaiah say what did paul say what we have to offer god is his filthy rags the things that we have done the accomplishments that we have made are as nothing there would be nothing let god god created everything god has done everything acts chapter 17 in him you move and you live and you have your very being at his hand all things were created at his breath all things came to life who do you think you are you better take another look because god wants to consume you remember Korah? you know who Korah is k-o-r-a the one thing that stands out about Korah to me more than anything are a lot of the Psalms are written by the sons of Korah. Which tells me that we serve a God who is a God of hope. We say, why do you say that, Pastor? Korah and his sons sound pretty spiritual. Yeah, his sons were. But Korah was not. You know what Korah was? You know what his position was? He was a Levite. You know what the Levites did? They ministered before the people. They dealt with the presence of God. They weren't just people that sat in pews. They were people. They were workers. They were leaders in the church. That's what Levites did. They were God called, God anointed. Not just anybody could become a Levite. Oh, no way. I mean, we're talking about an appointed person. And Korah was one of those Levites. And the Bible says in Numbers chapter 16, that Korah, this Levite, decided, this, this, this leader in, in the church community. See, that's what I love about this story. It's talking to the church. This speaks to the church. It's not the heathen. Oh, no, I know, I know, I know. You, 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 the fire of God that consumed Jericho. The fire of God that consumed the, 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 the people who weren't of God. The fire of God that consumes the unholy and the unrighteous. That's the fire that you think about. But God says, rethink it. Numbers chapter 16, Korah was a man of God, called of God, being used of God. And the Bible says that one day he wanted to raise himself above Moses. Who does that sound like? Who does that sound like? So there was one day that, that Satan, what was his downfall? That he would consider himself above God. Why is God so important? Didn't you see what I've got? Haven't you seen what I've done? And so he began to set himself up above the man of God, Moses. And God, as well as Moses and Aaron, didn't really like that too much, to put it mildly. Moses, like Elijah, said, well, we'll let the fire determine that tomorrow. So, Cor, you get your 250. And there were a few other guys involved, too, was it? It was Abiram and Dathan. You, know, you guys get your stuff together, just like Mount Carmel. It was almost kind of the same thing. He said, you get, you get your stuff together. And we'll let God decide. We'll let God decide who he chose to lead this bunch. We'll let God decide who the pastor is and who the leaders are. We'll let God decide. Who do you think you Levites are? See, that's what Moses was saying. That's what he told Korah. He said, I mean, my goodness, he said, look, God separated you from the rest of Israel. Verse number 9, Numbers chapter 16. He, 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 has, he has himself called you to do the work of the tabernacle, to stand before the community and to minister to them. What you are doing is not against me, but what you are doing is against the Lord God Almighty. Of course, said, you know what, Moses, whatever. I don't know who you think you are. Let us out here in the desert. Oh, yeah. The Red Sea. Woo! 
that's great. Where's the Red Sea parting now? I mean, this is what they were saying. That's what they were feeling. Well, I've seen God do great things in you and through you before, but where's all that great stuff now? What's wrong, Moses? Are you less spiritual? Or who do you think you are? Don't set yourself up over us and lord things over us. This was the dialogue. This is the conversation. Number 16, read it. And so the Bible says that Moses said, God, you need to really do something about this. You need to take care of this, God. And so the next day, Korah and 250 came before the tent, the tabernacle, the presence of God. That's what the Bible says. They, they got there. They got their stuff ready. They got their incense, got the fire. And Moses and Aaron, they're praying. And God said, all right, look, step aside. I'm killing everybody. Everybody's going to die today except for you two. And they said, no, God, they petitioned God, don't do that, God, don't do that. Just get rid of the chaff. Just get rid of the, the messed up ones. Just get rid of Korah and Nathan and Byron. Just get rid of those guys. And God says, all right, all right. Tell those three guys and all their people and all their kids and wives to step aside. Let no one touch them, get near them, and I will decide. And I will reveal myself through fire. That's what he did. It was through fire. Because that's what it ended up being. The Bible says that, that Moses stepped out and he said, God's going to do a great thing and you're going to know that God has called me and he's not called you. And the Bible says that the ground opened up, swallowed a Byram and Dothan and all of their family. The Bible says that in that moment that, that, that Korah and all the 250, the Bible says fire just came down and consumed them and got rid of them. In one day, everything that was not of God was gone. Everything that was not connected to, related to, had something to do with God was gone. You say, what does that mean to me? What is God saying to me? God is speaking to the church. He's not speaking to the heathen. He's not speaking to the lost, not in this moment, but in this moment he's talking to the church. He's talking to the workers. He's speaking to the Levites. God says if judgment would begin, it will begin in the house of God. He's speaking to the workers, to those who call themselves Christians. He's speaking to the, to the Korahs and the, and the Abirams. He's saying this. There's some things that have become a part of you. There's some mindset, mentalities, the way that you've been thinking, the way that you've been operating. You've not submitted to me. You've not submitted to the people that I have put over you. You, you think that it's about you. You've been going your own way. You've been misusing my son's name. You've taken away from what the cross accomplished 2,000 years ago. And I've got judgment this morning. Judgment begins in this house. God says it's time to get rid of the foolishness. It's time to lay down sin. It's time to get rid of anything that is not of God. This is what the fire does. It consumes things. The fire gets rid of things. The fire eliminates things. It separates it, exposes it, and it eliminates it all together in one whack. That is what the fire does. The Bible says in Deuteronomy, the Bible says in Hebrews that our God is a consuming fire. It's not just an Old Testament pretty thing. It's a New Testament thing. What did John the Baptist say of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? He's got the winnowing fork in his hand right now. He's at the threshing floor. He's separating the chaff from the wheat. And his fire will consume those things that are not of him. Don't, don't, don't you misunderstand God today. In Matthew chapter 25, he said there'll be some of you that will come before me and in your name I preached to God and in your name I gave to the poor oh God and in your name I visited and did the work and God will say to you you workers of iniquity I never knew you depart from me he's speaking to the house of God you see that's what the fire is that's how God will speak through the fire that's how God reveals himself through the fire that's how he leads with the fire is that he wants to consume you. His word is consuming. His presence is consuming. His direction and his leading is you becoming less of you so that you can become more like him. That is what the fire does. It is a consuming fire. So write it down. And I'm not trying to be smart and look cute. And I really don't care how you feel about it this morning because it's the word of the living God. And may it speak to you and cut your heart right in two. That today, write it down today. God says, get rid of it today. 
There is no promise of tomorrow. There's no promise of the next moment. God's speaking to his house. The reason my church isn't doing what it's supposed to be doing, the reason my church isn't making the difference that I've called them to make is because they're not even my church. They don't look like my church. They don't smell like my church. They don't talk like my church. They seem to look like the world. They talk like the world. They smell like the world. Get rid of the world. Our God is a consuming fire. You want the rain. You want the blessing. You want the presence. You want all the stuff that God says that he would give you. Then let his fire consume you. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 says this. That we're to present ourselves before God as a sacrifice. Something that would burn and be ever burned and be ever consumed so that we might be holy and so that we might be pleasing unto him this is our spiritual act of worship it's who he's called you to be someone who is ever being consumed constantly being consumed with the fire god consume us with your fire god let your fire fall this morning god change this living waters church of god oh god that we would have the mind of christ that we would know what to do and which way to go God, let your fire fall. Amen? You're either saying amen or ouch. I said ouch. You see, when the fire consumes you, and only when the fire consumes you, because if you've not been consumed, then you don't get refined, and you don't walk in the power. That's the way that it goes. If you talk about, well, I got the power of God, and you look like the world, smell like the world, and talk like the world, then you may have a form of godliness. But the Bible says that you deny his power by the way you speak, the way you look, and the way you smell. Well, how could you say that? Because I will know a tree by the fruit that it bears. And for some of you, it's not even rotten fruit. There just isn't any fruit. You might as well be the fig tree that Jesus cursed and died. You gotta let God consume you. You gotta let Him have you, every part of you. Let Him do His thing. What are you worried about? Why are you sweating Him? So, what if things change? So, what if you're not the person you used to be? So, what if everything else passes away and it's just you and God? That's who He's called us to be. The consuming fire is not something that you run from and that you're afraid of. The consuming fire, it's children of God. It's something we run to. It's something that we embrace. God, send your fire. Let your fire fall. Begin with me.